I'm wearing leather. 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 Fleur de lis. Tweeds. Little jacket. Shoulder pad. Colourful. No sleeves and cape. Corset and a couple of skirts. Glitzy glam. Just look cool, really. That's great. You don't have to do anything. No acting required. I've sort of always wanted to wear this costume. I've not voiced that, obviously. I did realise probably every costume fitting I've ever been to, even if one is playing a priest or a greengrocer, you always, no matter what you're playing, you kind of scan the rail for a bit of leather. And you think, I wonder if I'm wearing that. And you often aren't. And you go, that's fine. One day I will. And here I am. Our costume designer, Phoebe de Gay, makes me laugh. If you spend any time in her company, she brings you into the world of, of the costume. Her whole concept, right from the word go, about how to make each one of these musketeers individual and yet bring them completely away from the old received idea of what a musketeer is with sort of flouncy hats and tabards and big feathers. Masculinity and all getting sort of down and dirty with it and mud and leather and there's lots of wear on the leather and you see all the marks of their past battles. My costume was a herd of wildebeest which had been slaughtered and then gutted and then sewn together and then draped over my body. Uh, it's just basically leather, top to toe. These are some of the early sketches for the Musketeers. Starting to distinguish them by having their different colours really was a key thing. And yet keeping within a kind of palette that would then work with the other Musketeers because we had stock stuff that we had to sort of build the whole look to mesh together. The way sometimes the leather just wraps around quite a simple way and quite long coat seemed a good approach for Aramis. So Aramis has got this long, almost frock coat-like length to him. He's quite elegant and he's quite sensual, so his leather's quite soft. These boots are great as well. I mean, they, they're, like, they're like puss in boots. They can go all the way up. Athos is much more of um, a sort of hardened soldier. His, his um, doublet is made out of very tough leather. I'm wearing a very thick leather black doublet, or slate, I think they might call it charcoal, and some tonally matching trousers. This is called a doublet. Um, just goes over the top of a shirt, does up with a little string. D'Artagnan, I remember Toby, our first director, saying he's really like a knave, he's very young. He's becoming, he becomes a musketeer. He had these quite simple leather sleeveless garments and things that he wore. And then Portos, he's the most decorated out of all of them. He's got punched work in his thing, he's got stud work, reddish sort of colours. Well, this is my uniform, but as you can see, is uh, a demonstration of the uh, height of Parisian fashion. Here we have the, um, the Fleur de Lis uh, Musketeer shoulder pad. If you're watching this in high definition, you will notice the scars of previous skirmishes, which is how you recognize a musketeer. They have to have shoulder pad and a beard. One of the things that was quite tricky in a way, as a design problem, the beginning was that they wanted them all to be very individual and yet they had to have a uniform. So the thing came up with for that was for them to have these leather arms. Each one is very different and distinct and yet they all have a fleur de lis and they all are a kind of piece of leather armour that they wear. This was a sample for Porthos that we will end up using. It's just slightly too large, so this won't be the one he has, but his will look very similar. It all starts as flat hides like this of veg tan, all cut flat and then wet and moulded and then put together. Well, now I'm just transferring the design onto the leather. Yeah, so that's where it starts and then use any of these tools that are suitable to create a texture or pattern. There's no hard and fast rules, it's just whatever looks good. And having a sharp blade is essential, and the cutting is the most important part of it. You can sort of fix most other things if it goes wrong, but if you cut wrong, then 
You can't really. Well now, just to bring that all out, I would bevel the edge of it. You can see what the tools are doing there. It's just about levelling the background to bring out the texture of the design. Because we're filming, you know, we're going very close to things. And so things have to look like they've gone greasy with age, they've faded on the shoulders. Breakdown or art finishing is the same department really where you age and dye costumes or costume pieces, everything from fabric to leather to metal. You'll give it to someone who specialises in just doing that and they'll make it look old or broken or rusty or whatever it is they want it to look like. It's a very uh, highly specialised skill, that one, to get it right. The first sequence we shot is in heavy driving rain with a posse of fake musketeers who had these hats, which I realised they actually, they weren't like gutters. That's what they would have done at the time because the water just pours out of the front of the hat. So things like that are great because you sort of get in touch with the period but in a quite interesting way. Very practical, the hats. Actually, there's a good little tidbit with a hat when you fire one of these. Fire would come up. A good way of doing it if you would just go like that and protect your face. Found this fantastic leather that was all, um, it was all slit with a razor. So it's got these kind of tiny lines on it. And it, when you see these cloaks, you, you don't know what they're made of. They could be a kind of wool. They're just very supple and they hang very well. They have these sort of set in long sleeves that are all buttoned. There's a, I think there's a hundred buttons per cloak. So anyway, we started filming, all the buttons fell off. <laughs> filming in the rain, there's buttons everywhere, all over the set, they ought to be re-sewn on because everything was made in such a hurry. <laughs> so anyway, but finally they all got sewn on so they stayed on. This is my standard going to work, torturing, no one expects the Spanish Inquisition type of outfit. This was some reference for Richelieu. This was an idea that everyone was very keen on, that he should be a mixture of armour and red robes. You very rarely see him in ecclesiastical things. Most of the time he's wearing this rather sinister leather, <laughs> black leather, which was all sort of pleated and stamped and things, so it's slightly reptilian. And um, then he puts cloaks and things over the top of that, which have flashes of red. So Milady's costumes are a form of armour. In, in the book she's described as a, a woman of a hundred faces. So there's so many layers and, and ways these costumes can transform. She sort of skulks in the shadows quite a lot. first dress we did for Milady, which was all draped, it looks like she just tossed the thing together, but actually it's incredibly complicated. It's all one piece of fabric, comes across the back through, makes a sleeve, you know, turns into the hood. 